Hi, this is Andy Simon with Save Open Space Burlington. And um, we have a distinguished panel today to talk about um, the Champlain Parkway and recent developments. Um, um, the uh, title of the show is South End Update Right Way or Wrong Turn. Um, Tony suggested maybe right way or wrong way, but either way, uh, there's a lot to talk about. I want to introduce um, Mark Hughes, Executive Director of the Racial Justice Alliance in Vermont. Uh, Tony Reddington, who's with the Pine Street Coalition and a longtime uh, highway uh, planner uh, by profession. Uh, Steve Goodkind, also with the um, Pine Street Coalition, former Director of Public Works in Burlington, former city engineer and former candidate for mayor for the Progressive Party, um, <laughs> among other things. Uh, so uh, there's there's a lot to talk about, and I think our uh, the center of our discussion is going to be about uh, environmental justice and racial justice related to the Parkway. But uh, as uh, Save Open Space, and also as a member of uh, Friends of Englesby Brook, I'd like to hear a little bit about. Um, the environmental impact of the of the current plan uh, as proposed by the city for the Champlain Parkway, um, and also um, how that might be mitigated by um, the right way plan that Pine Street Coalition is is presenting. <clears throat> sure, I can start, uh, Andy. Thank you. Um, the uh, Englesby Brook has been a concern right from the get go, and. Uh, a, uh, a lady who's been active in the in the preservation area, Diane Gayer, was a, is a member of our group. And the Anglesby Brook, uh, people don't realize, is the largest uh, stream in Burlington that enters Lake Champlain. You don't see much of it because much of it's been put underground over the years. And the proposed parkway would do the same. It would take about a 200-foot strip of the Anglesby Brook and stick it into the ground and, and force it to go through a pipe. It's uh, what I would say is not a very nice thing to do to uh, what, uh, a natural area, uh, particularly one uh, that, that is so important to the, to the south end of the city. So the, our union of what we call now our, our union of the right way, which is uh, Pine Street Coalition, uh, Marx Group, Vermont Racial Justice Alliance, and 40th Burlington, which owns Innovation Center on Lakeside Avenue, we, we have said from the beginning that uh, we believe that the uh, preservation of not only the brook itself, but the, the shorelines and the uh, flood floodplain area should be a, a prime consideration. And we shouldn't be throwing a, uh, what was gonna be a four lane highway and now is still a wide two lane highway right through, through and over the brook uh, and, and bury it. So um, that has uh, been a chief consideration. Uh, it is today and it will continue to be um, an objective of our, our, our union uh, right way, union for a Champlain uh, right way. Okay, great. Um, uh, so um, my uh, uh, take on uh, what the city is putting forward is that the Champlain Parkway as planned is moving forward. Um, there are no obstacles in the way. Um, there are um, uh, there's no reason why they shouldn't go ahead with their phased plan that they put forth to city council. Um, what's the perspective and what are the concerns um, from Pine Street Coalition, from the Racial Justice Alliance uh, about this plan and what are you proposing as an alternative? I, I'll take the key question, uh, Andy, which is uh, <clears throat> what is the status? Uh, the Pine Street Coalition went to uh, U.S. District Court two years ago on D-Day 6 of June uh, with a court suit to stop the parkway. That suit has been held in abeyance because, oh, surprise, uh, the, the, the federal, uh, uh, federal officials agreed with us that the new environmental justice regulations had not been applied to the parkway. So they asked for a delay, which obviously we not only uh, didn't uh, oppose, but supported the application of these rules. That court suit still sits there today, two years later. Um, I'll let Mark address what was done or not done in terms of that environmental justice process. So the idea that, that the uh, city, which is every year they say, oh, we're gonna start construction this next spring. 
They've been saying that for, for, for a decade now. In fact, uh, uh, we, would, we would like to see some kind of resolution, some kind of change that we could and get to the table to, so that the parkway, can, a, a, a reasonable project could go forward on behalf of the South End and its needs to, of today. Uh, but right now we're in court and uh, unless something changes, that court suit uh, would, would be uh, then begun again, uh, become active and at the normal course of, the, of events, a, 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 a court suit on a project like this would take six to seven years to be resolved. That's what our lawyers tell us. So that gives you an idea what the actual status is versus what um, the uh, rosy scenario painted by the uh, city leadership would have you believe. Um, thank you, Tony. Um, I guess um, then can we move on to the, to the environmental justice aspect of it and what, what uh, if the city is in fact, the city, state and federal um, process has addressed that in any meaningful way and um, what you're proposing uh, from, uh, from the other side of this discussion. Mark, can you take that on? Andy, thank you, thank you for uh, having me. Uh, this is a, a, a great conversation. Uh, this is the, um, the first time that we've had the opportunity to engage like this. I think we're going to do a number um, more of these. Um, I, I would love to, to back up, though, if you don't mind, and, and, and just maybe set the stage uh, a little bit more for, for the uh, discussion at hand, imagining that <clears throat> Say folks are hearing about the Champlain Parkway, and maybe they have some questions. And, and I think it's really important to understand that this this project is, it, you know, it was, you know, things that were happening during that time was as we were thinking about, uh, you know, that you know maybe we should have we should do something some down somewhere down the line like <clears throat> land use. Maybe we might get to a Act 250, uh, and uh, the civil rights movement was uh, in full swing across the United States. <clears throat> so um. This is how old this project is. There's a whole cast of characters. It's almost like um, you know the um, the the um, I, the who's who of everybody. There, yes, Ingleby Ingles, Ingleby's Brook, if I can say it, is is involved. Tony mentioned Fortieth. Uh, there's a super fun site involved in this uh, conversation. There's Maple King, uh, affluent white neighborhoods, businesses in Burlington. Shoppers, DOT, DPW, VTrans, uh, CCRPC, and EIEIO, and all of the rest. There are so many uh, players uh, in this uh, particular uh, thing. And as the, the story goes, it seemed like a good idea uh, to route traffic from I-189 uh, as you come out to what we now know to be the road to nowhere, which is actually the first part of this project as you come out up on 189 as you are sitting there. Uh, Denny's is there, as you recall. Um, the um, the um, Market 32 is there and so forth. Uh, Buffalo Wild Wings. So as you get, it, the intention was is to be able to take that off ramp and it would just dump you into downtown ultimately. So for those who are watching, I think that's really, really important to understand because the, the reason why this project was designed uh, was um, to reduce traffic in an affluent white neighborhood uh, in the south end of Burlington and also uh, provide a pathway for those uh, who want to spend money, uh, who those, those obviously you would assume that they have money to spend in downtown Burlington, shopkeepers, uh, so this is commerce, uh, to be able to spend money in downtown Burlington, okay? And what, what they have discovered during the process is that there is a super fun site, uh, which literally costs tens, if not hundreds of millions of dollars to clean up uh, that was right on the trajectory. Uh, and so what they decided to do, uh, instead of figuring out how, and oh, by the way, it too feeds into, this is Barge Canal, it too feeds into the lake. Uh, in the, um, every now and then it will spit something out into the lake because it hasn't been cleaned up. So nobody stopped this project to determine how we go about cleaning up that mess. What they decided to do is, is to end around that mess and nobody's talking about that mess anymore, nor is there anyone being held accountable for it. Um, um, 
likely someone profited quite well from whatever was done in that space. <clears throat> um, so this project was detoured and now it's going through an area of uh, the state, the city that we call Maple King, which just so happened to be um, the blackest and the brownest and the most populous uh, uh, refugee resettlement area uh, in the entire state. So that's where the conversation starts. Um, so I think that it's important to understand that this project would reduce traffic at the same time in an affluent white neighborhood by as much as 74%. And at the same time, increase traffic in this neighborhood uh, by as much as maybe 30 to 34%. So that's the groundwork that we're working off of. That's, that's where everything kind of starts, the conversation starts for those who were watching and for those who um, maybe didn't understand the background. So we've got a lot of problems. And if, if nothing else, and I'll stop here and go back to you, I, I don't know that I've completely answered the question, but I'm gonna look to my colleagues to, to, uh, to kind of pick up uh, more on this conversation. But if this doesn't, um, if this doesn't provide us any other uh, lesson, um, I think you, hopefully if you're listening, you've gotten something out of that. But we can also see where there's this convergence of this environmental uh, where we have this, we have racial justice, we have all of the ingredients of a great movie, I, I guess is what I'm, I'm saying here, because we've got this, um, we've got economics, we have capitalism, we've got affluent white folks, we have environment, we have, the, we have environmental justice, we have racial justice, um, you know, we're, we're, we're looking over at Inglesby and we're seeing how that overlaps uh, with um, Maple King and how it overlaps with commerce in the city. So all of this stuff is a convergence of a perfect recipe for disaster and right way is trying to avoid that. So I'll kick it back over to you for, uh, and, and thanks for allowing me to give the background. Thank, thank you so much, Mark. I, I just wanna, I, I, I wanna be sure that we address at this some point in this discussion, the, uh, the question of why the city and seemingly the state and federal uh, federal highway uh, uh, commission um, or administration is uh, persisting with this plan and insisting on not uh, addressing the right way proposal. So well, please let me take that one, Andy. I'm, okay, I'm, I'm really glad you asked that question. <clears throat> um, in a word. Money. Period. This in, this entire thing, everything that we're talking about, just like everything else that we deal with. Um, I mean, look, this whole thing about racism or systemic racism, if you will, from our perspective, you know, we'd have to go back to genocide and slavery, and even that was about money. So I think we need to stop uh, overcomplicating. The issues that we're dealing with, you know, the decisions are made at city council, the decisions are made in the mayor's office, the decisions are made at the statewide level, the decisions are made on the federal level on this, the entire purpose of this was about money, it was about being able to provide those who are who own businesses downtown the ability to bring folks in to to it was to placate those who are white and affluent in the south end to give folks who are rural and don't have to live in the city, the ability to access, uh, ex, you know, to, to be able to spend their money. And, and, and once this thing goes shovel and ground, I'll guarantee you, it's also about those folks who will be profiting from the project as well. And one thing I can assure you that you won't find many black or brown folks uh, that are benefiting economically across any of this. Thank you so much for that, Mark. Now, the, just a quick follow up on that. Um, why? Can you, can um, you hear me? By the way, yeah, I, okay, I can hear you, Steve. Let me, let me just, let me just ask. Yes, well, let me just ask this question, and you can follow up with that. Why? Sure. The, why wouldn't the city um, uh, see the right way proposal as a way to move forward instead of as an obstacle to them? And I, I, I think everything that Mark said is true, but there's also something, and it's been 
this way for a long time. There's egos involved in this thing at the federal level, at the state level, and at the city level. And I think this, the fact that the EIS was not changed at all is as much due to that as anything. They are not going to admit that they've made a mistake. They're not going to admit they did wrong. And they all want to just get this thing done. Can you and clarify? The irony is they don't really care about the issues we're talking about. They just want it off the books. It's, it's a project that's been around for a long time. It's what's called a MEGC project. It has a very favorable funding ratio. The feds pay for most of it, more than on most other highway projects. And it's, but every state used to have these. We got the only one or two left in the country now. They want it done. And again, it doesn't matter to them how it gets done. They just want it, it's off the books. They want to check a box, especially the feds and the state. The city, I think the mayor would sort of like to get it done, but I think he's made deals with them and he's, he's not a person that can back off from things. He, that's just his ego. He, again, wants it built to show that he can build it on his watch. And they're not interested in taking any more time. They're not interested in changing it. They want it done. They want to check the box and say they did it. And it's their egos that drive them. And it's too bad, but they just can't look back. You would think the mayor would say, this is a great opportunity now to do it right. In fact, Tony and I will always say that Chapin Spencer, the current public work director, has said a number of times in meetings that if we were designing this project today, it wouldn't be like this. He's acknowledging that this is not the way you would do it, but they're doing it. They're doing it. Tony, so you're you being driven to... by politics, by ego, and all the other things that Mark said. And they just don't want to admit they're wrong. They don't want to admit that they made a mistake in 2009 when they issued the rod uh, for this project. They don't want to say that there was anything wrong with that. And that's what the EIS reflects. Nothing was wrong. It's ridiculous if you look at it. The laws have changed, but nothing was wrong. The city back then objected to this project the way they approved it. They're still saying, but nothing was wrong. So that's what we're up against. Can we, um, thank you, Steve. Can we, can we um, be careful about uh, clarifying acronyms that we use like EIS and ROD and, uh, and other ROD things? ROD is that... Record of Decision. Okay. EIS is the Environmental Impact Statement. It's the Record okay. of Decision, which basically sets what this project is gonna get look, look like and what they're gonna, what the feds and the state are gonna agree to with the project. That was I'd, I'd like choice. to clarify too, uh, Steve, that the, the letters E I E I O are just simply meaningless, and I just figured I'd throw those in. Just to, uh, <laughs> you're probably right. You know, what are you going to do? Well, think of it this way: it took a Superfund site for them, for the uh, state and the and the feds, to change the direction of the project. Uh, also, uh, think about this for a moment: there there has been change. Uh, the the uh, original concept back in the 1950s was a ring road around Burlington, and that that uh, so the the uh, Champlain Parkway was to bring a four lane highway right through uh, the south end uh, through the waterfront and connect up to the Beltline, and ultimately through the circumferential highway back to I one uh, I 89. As I think we all know, the the uh, uh, section uh, through the waterfront uh, died decades ago. Uh, the circumferential uh, highway died last decade, and this is a remnant. And uh, think about this, that they spent $30 million building a four-lane highway between uh, uh, the interstate uh, on uh, Shelpin Road right to uh, Home Avenue. You can go down there, it's the road to nowhere, $30 million. What are we going to do with that $30 million roadway that's 60 foot wide that can handle four lanes of traffic? We're going to grind it up and recycle it. So times do change. Uh, the uh, real threat that uh, the project has right now is the union of the, the three opponents, of which two are represented here today, Vermont Racial Justice and Pine Street, at, at the, the U.S. District Court. While, the, uh, while Steve is correct that the egos are involved here, there's also a, a, a facts of life that are involved here. The facts of life are these leaders uh, uh, do not want a six-year court process in which they might lose. We hope. <laughs> right. That we, we, are, we are confident that they will lose. So uh, th th at some point, those egos are going to re result, as we have asked for now for years, a coming together, a collaborative approach to a resolution so that 
this project can be revised and changed, protect the, you know, basically um, improve the King Maple neighborhood, not destroy it, uh, and you know, preserve the Inglesby Brook uh, and and the, and the natural areas around it, and of course, get right now part of what started us all was the Walk Bike Council who endorsed the Pine Street Coalition uh, proposals because there's not an inch of sidewalk and there's not an inch of bikeway. I think Burlington thinks there is nothing more popular in Burlington than walking and biking. Yet there is the there is a degrading of walking and biking in the in, in the parkway. You can't you know you can't make some of this stuff up. Uh, King Maple, Inglesby Brook, uh, the the uh, walk and bike, and we haven't even talked about shutting off the connection between South End uh, and. Uh, Hannaford's and McDonald's of all things, the people in the South End, if they want to get there, if the parkway is built, they're going to have to go out to, to Shelburne Road. I mean, you cannot, if, if you sat down and tried to design a roadway today that works against the economic, social, environmental, uh, all the code words you want to use, the current parkway design is the one you would come up with. And, and we won't have it. Can, can I, I, here's, no. So here's, here's a question that seems really key to me is how would the right way proposal that Pine Street and the Racial Justice Alliance are putting forward address the concerns of the King and Maple neighborhood? How, what, what would you do differently in this movie when you rewrite the script to uh, address those concerns? Well, um, I'll, I'll just say this. I, I think that there's a... Um, there's, there's a couple parts to that question um, because I'm, 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 kind of, I'm quasi reluctant to answer the question in its total, you know, without an without a approach of um, just looking at the, the total project. And the reason why is, is, is because the constituencies that I represent are not the constituencies, constituencies that Tony and, uh, and, uh, and Judith and Cindy and, uh, and Steve represent. And, and when, there's always this tendency when we start talking about one vested interest uh, that there's this division and, that, and that's how they get it every time is they divide. So I just wanna make it clear before I say what I'm gonna say is, is that you know, it's important that the, the totality of the project be considered. You know, I think it's important for us to consider uh, when we come from, you know, when we come off of 189 across home um, to, to, um, to Flynn, um, that it's important to get back out on to, um, to Pine Street, you know, because that, that's, that avoidance of that particular area down there is, is important, just as important in, in, in some ways to some people as it is uh, to take, uh, you know, over at, um, you know, right as we come into the, uh, I'm just going to call it the um, uh, 200th block of uh, two, right approaching the soda plant. Um, what's the name of that road, Tony? Um, Gilbert. What, what is it, Kilburn? Yeah. Kilburn Street. So, uh, so the, it's just as important to, to, to take uh, Kilburn uh, to the, I think, I believe it's to the west, uh, and then to arc it around and join it uh, into uh, what is now Battery Street. So basically, if you imagine, um, I think the map was just up a moment ago, if you imagine from right around that Kilburn area, just creating a little arc uh, that goes around, if you can put the arrow on it. That avoids yeah. that completely avoids, but that's you know that's a part of it. Uh, the other thing is, is if you go through Inglesby, uh, which which what you what you have is is you have a situation coming up. Uh, I believe it's Lakeside uh, that creates a disaster back over at Pine Street. Um, you know, so th there's 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 all kinds of reasons why this project makes sense if it's done the right way, um, and I think that the your question, although appreciated, uh, how to circumvent the Maple King uh, neighborhood uh, is important. Um, you know, I think the right way is is more important that we get that we get this thing that we because what they have done in order to um, prevent having a conversation about the right way is first they convoluted they being uh, DPW the uh, the folks over at. Um, be trans, and I, I guess it's endorsed or fingerprints on uh, from the Fed. Is oh, is, is that? Oh, let's first talk about. Um, let's just um, you know, let's create a larger discussion. We want to talk about all of the projects that are happening in the north on the south end, um, which which to me, because I live on the north side of town, 
I live in the hood. So, I mean, so it's one of those things where, well, why are we talking about South End projects anyway? Anyway, I digress, but the point is that they've created this whole different conversation. Uh, and, then, and then through that conversation, they've um, decided not to talk about certain parts of this project at all. Um, and then they decided to, um, you know, make um, empty commitments about this whole um, arc that I just showed you at Kilburn uh, that somehow suggests that the decision will be made later down the road, whether they're actually, when and how they're going to actually do that. Uh, so I think it's really, I think it's really important for us to stick together on this. Um, I think um, we need, we need to be talking about the right way as a whole project and under no circumstances should this project be completed uh, without that, what we call the rail yard enterprise. That is that, that little arc there, Andy. Um, yeah. that's, there's, there's no way that we should complete this project under any circumstances without, uh, without that being, first, being done first. Correct. Tony, I hear you. You know, uh, you know, Andy, it goes back to the original concept of this road. This road was always going to bypass neighborhoods, always. And that includes King Street Maple, and includes Home and Flynn. That was what it was going to do. The Feds changed that in 2009. Up until then, that's what this was about. So the mm -hmm. idea that it's going through King Street, that's a new concept. Something that I don't think the city has ever agreed with. And as Mark says, the solution is to go back to including something like the rail enterprise project in the project, which was in earlier versions of the city's project. The Feds took it out. So we want to go back to that and Got to remember, though, again, it's a whole project. It isn't just one piece. But the goals of going around neighborhoods, that was a primary goal. And the, the feds just ignored that in 2009 when they approved and insisted that it be this version or no version that included going right through King Street neighborhood. One of the arguments that the city is making now is that the uh, uh, rail yard enterprise uh, loop that you've been highlighting uh, would take uh, a number of years to uh, be permitted and, um, and planned yep. and would, would delay this project considerably. Is that um, something that you see as an, as an obstacle or a problem? It's just well, gotta um, be dealt with. It, it is what it is. Look, you're gonna look, get it right or you're not it. gonna. It's not an excuse for doing it wrong. Yeah, let's talk about that for it's a minute. Gotta wait. Because I think that, um, there, there is this 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 narrative uh, that um, is created, you know, when there is um, a political or economic power, and um, and there are there's you know certain groups of folks who are who are literally um, voiceless, uh, and and what we what we find in in this this is a a a, a racially systemic thing that you will always see is, is there, there is this, um, this false narrative of urgency. And, and that, that sense of urgency is always determined by the folks with the political and, and economic power. Um, and those folks who do not have political and economic power, uh, their, their sense of urgency is, is never really taken uh, very seriously. Um, so this, this, these false emergencies uh, that we hear you know, all of the time, oh, we gotta hurry up, we gotta, if, if there was a big, if let's just say, for example, I'll just give you one example. Right now we've got um, an unprecedented um, surplus at the, at the statewide level as a result of ARPA funding, okay? Um, there, is, there is a sense of urgency uh, in, in many of these communities across this state in terms of their economic despair. Um, but What's going on is, is that there's this statewide tour that's happening with the speaker and the pro tem, and they want to take their time and figure out if and when and how they want to spend this. You see what I'm getting at here? This is a 60 year project. So, you know, I think it's ludicrous. Uh, it's, it's actually ridiculous for us or anybody else to be sitting around having a conversation about the implications of another three to five years. That's right. When this project was actually um, planned in the fifties, for us to be to say, well, we're in a we're in a hurry. And the other thing is, is there's this whole again, it's all about money. It's either 
um, we're going to, um, we may lose money or there's a prospect, the prospect of us gaining money may no longer exist. That's it, in a nutshell, it's, we see it all the time. You know, I, I don't wanna, I don't wanna bash, I don't wanna bash capitalism, but greed is a problem. Um, so the thing is, is that, you know, even the decision at the city council is driven with one consideration, notwithstanding, I mean, not ignoring their fiduciary responsibility. I'm a smart guy. Um, but the point here is, is those, that decision is being made out of one thing and it is literally a threat. And it's well-documented and reinforced just recently with documentation from the state as well as the Fed saying, if you guys don't do this, you're gonna to have to pay us some ridiculous amount of money that doesn't make any sense, like $45 million or something like that. So the city council is faced with making a decision, facing their constituents and making a decision um, and saying, let the cards fall where they may, bring it on. Um, I will put people above money, no matter what you threaten me with, I'm not gonna let that go. That takes some intestinal fortitude, some political will. Unfortunately, we're not seeing that. We're not seeing it happen. Yeah, uh, I want to add- mind, by the way, though, they are using the threat that somehow the money will have to be paid back. There's one scenario where the money would have to be paid back. There are an infinite number of scenarios where it doesn't. So they're focusing on the one thing, which there's so many ways that I'll let that happen that it's crazy. And they're holding that up as the boogeyman. But the truth is, there's a million ways to do this and not pay it back. There's one way to not do it and have to pay it back. We have infinite choices here if we want to take them. We don't have to worry about the one possibility of having to pay it back when there's so many other ways to do this and not have to pay it back. Just, just don't think, want you to know that. Just think of the fact that it was Governor Dean who said no to opening the road to nowhere, a four lane highway right to the uh, uh, intersection of uh, Palm Avenue uh, and, and forgetting why he, he made that decision. In fact, now here we are about 20 years later recognizing that not only was he right, but that we never needed a four lane highway to begin with. Correct. And what, what the right way people are saying is that we need even a more scaled down project our, our proposal would cost basically eight to $10 million less than what's being proposed right now. But uh, so on the one hand, if money is important, then we're the ones that are trying to save it. And the federal highway and uh, the egos of the federal highway uh, state and, and, and some, some city leadership are, are getting in the way of what is, we've, what, what is really a sensible uh, design if we could all come to an agreement. I agree with uh, right. Mark entirely uh, that uh, the timing in view of a half century project of waiting three or four years, we just spent two years spinning our wheels. That's two years. Yeah. And, and, and if it's six to seven years to get the, the right way, uh, excuse me, the railroad enterprise project done. So we immediately improve the conditions in King Maple, which would be a huge victory and a huge benefit to a community which 26% live, live in poverty and 30% don't even have access to a car and a dependent upon walking and transit, that's a huge victory for, 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 our, for that low-income neighborhood who were forced by the Federal Highway Agency to accept a project that cuts them in two. And that decision was made in 2009. Yeah, that, yeah, ironically, of course. To, we need to get sensible here. Since 2010 or so, when the record of decision was issued, where have they been? What have they done with the last 10 or 11 years? All of a sudden, it's an emergency. They dragged their feet. They didn't take opportunities they could have had when they were presented to them. And now they're all of a sudden saying, got to have it fast. You just whittled away 11 years when you could have done so much more with this. So I think, as we're all saying, the argument that it might take a little more time, well, to get it right, it's probably going to. And they have frittered away this time so far. Got about 11 or 12 years now and done nothing. Can, Ridiculous. Can, can the federal government and the Vermont Agency of Transportation sit there with a straight face and be upset because the King Maple neighborhood, uh, which they decided would have this parkway 
cut it in two, that somehow uh, 10 years later, there would be some people would say, well, we really don't want to do that. Can yeah, they really nice believe there. that? And they made the decision to do that. Not, not the city. It was purely a, a federal and, and, and state decision. Correct. Why are you optimistic? You expressed some optimism before. Why are you optimistic that um, the district court would rule in favor of the Pine Street Coalition, the Racial Justice Alliance, and oh, 40th Burlington? We're, it's, you know, we've made some gains, you know, in spite of all of our discussion up to now. The, the fact that the railroad enterprise project, the connection between Kilburn and, and Battery Street, that little arch, uh, which bypasses the King Maple neighborhood, that's a 180 degree turn by the federal people who say, oh, we'll fund that now. We think that's a good idea. We'll give you $20 million to do that. That, that, is, that, is, because, that is because the Pine Street Coalition, Innovation Center, and Vermont Racial Justice Alliance brought back pressure to the, to the parkway as it's currently designed. That's a huge victory. In the, in the mix of things, people will forget it. But if we're talking about a change, as, 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 Mark, as Steve talked about the egos involved, there has been some ego shift uh, yeah. in the last two years. And if we go back, back to court in a few weeks, there may be some additional shift because the entire current design could be stopped. Not that the project would be stopped, but that the design changes we're, we're advocating for, which, which relate to environment, walking, biking, you know, to, to environmental justice, to the preservation of Anglesey Park. Those are the issues we're going to court on. And we've been working on it for a while. Where can people I, I find out more information? I, I want to, uh, before we end, and I want to get this in so that we, um, before we run out of time, um, where can people follow uh, closely and get more information about what's going on with, with this project and with these proposals? Probably well, not from DPW. <laughs> first, stay, uh, online, safestreetsburlington.com. Again, that's just safestreetsburlington, one word, dot com. And if you uh, search on Facebook, uh, uh, Pine Street Coalition, uh, you will, you'll come to our website that brings a, a lot of historic information up um, I, I, I've been to the R Vermont Racial Justice Alliance uh, uh, website also. I believe this material there, Mark, is that true? There is, yeah, and you can, um, and I, I would say just Google right way and, and it'll, it'll land you on our pages that we posted and, and there's also, and we'll be, um, we'll continue to post uh, some of the um, updates. I, I, I think, um, Andy, maybe we might want to take it offline, but um, there, I, I think the outcome here is is the outcome here is is really not a binary outcome. It's really important to understand that that you know, this thing can go in, in multiple directions. Still, at this point, as part of the reason why we've agreed to show up and have this conversation, there's still a lot of folks who can see. There's a lot of folks who don't know about census tracts 10 and 11, who don't know about the Superfund site, who don't know about this ludicrous uh, idea, who don't know about the mischaracterization of the original EIS or of the limited scope EIS. The, the limited scope EIS is just a mischaracterization of the representation of the poor and the black and brown folks that are in the space. A lot of folks don't know that. A lot of folks don't uh, know and understand you know, how this thing is, is playing out. And I think as folks uh, do begin to dial in, uh, they're going to increasingly understand more uh, that this is a this is a uh, a, um, a textbook example of uh, profit over people, and these people happen to be black and brown and poor people, and you couldn't hit these people on a dartboard uh, if you tried 20 times if you were throwing darts. Uh, that's how difficult it is to find a project that bifurcates this neighborhood in this state. Uh, so I think once folks, once that becomes increasingly more, um, I think, um, in, in the blogosphere and folks begin to see and understand that, I'm confident that not just in the court, but maybe even uh, there are several other ways this thing can get derailed. And I'm still I'm optimistic that it's just not going to go forward because I, I guess, you know, ca call me an optimist, but I'm, I'm, I'm not seeing this kind of wrong standing, not here, not on our watch. I, I actually think that that is a, a great place to um, put a pin in this discussion for now. <laughs> um, 
Put them all and, on it. And uh, and I, I'd like to thank you all, Mark Hughes, Tony Reddington, Steve Goodkind, and thank CCTV for uh, providing this space to uh, talk about um, what's going on with uh, the right way proposal and the Champlain Parkway. Um, there's obviously much more to talk about, but um, I think that um, we will continue in other uh, other forums and uh, and perhaps also on another program on CCTV. This is Andy Simon with Save Open Space Burlington, and um, uh, we'll see you next time. <laughs>